Oh, hi, Helen. Wow, it has been a long time. How have you been? Well, I just finished my history studies and I'm doing an internship at the museum right now. What are you doing at the moment? Right now, I'm doing a project on synthetic biology. What biology? Synthetic biology. It's a part of biological research that combines biology and engineering. We build organisms or functions not found in nature. Wow, that sounds really interesting. Tell me more. Well, there are several fields where synthetic biology is applied. I can give you some examples of the most important ones. Can you guess which one this is? That's right, I'm talking about the environment. Synthetic biology has facilitated a lot of improvements and discoveries here. A good example of synthetic biology used in the environment sector are the biosensors. Biosensors? What are they good for? Let me illustrate with an example. Imagine you would have to fight this terrible monster over here. You might be scared, but you can clearly see and locate him. It would be a little harder with this little fellow over here, but if you're brisk enough, you might catch him in the end. But what happens if you're confronted with an enemy as small as this one over here? Um, wait a minute. Where exactly... How do you detect the danger that is so small you cannot even perceive it? Small dangers are, for example, microorganisms or chemical compounds, and they can be found everywhere. They're in the water, in our food, and even in the air. Most of them are not a threat for humans, but sometimes we want to play it safe and check our environment for dangers like these. Synthetic biology can be very helpful here. You still haven't told me about the biosensors. I'm getting there. You see, if you want to fight these little monsters, you have to pick a weapon their size. This is where biosensors come into play. Biosensors can be engineered enzymes or microorganisms that interact in a very specific way with our little enemy. After they do so, they give out a signal that tells us whether the compound or microorganism we are looking for is contained in our probe. That sounds simple, but how are we able to see the signal if our so-called weapon is as small as our enemy? There are many different signals we can detect. For example, there is luminescence. Some detectors vary their electric conductance, which can also easily be followed. Also, some detectors start a chemical reaction when confronted with a given compound. Here is an example. There are certain biodetectors that are employed to detect antibiotics in our environment. You can artificially add a chromophore, this is a chemical group that can emit colored light, to an enzyme which reacts with the antibiotic. This chromophore can only emit light when it gets in touch with another region of the enzyme, which it doesn't as long as there is no antibiotic around. When latter binds to the enzyme, a change of the conformation takes place and the chromophore touches the other enzyme region, which we perceive as a colorful light. That sounds quite fascinating. What else can synthetic biology do? Well, there is another big sector. Synthetic biology is also very helpful in medicine. You see, when we get sick, there are several methods to cure us. A lot of them are invasive, which is damaging for the patient. Some involve chemical compounds that can also harm our body and that have to be taken in overdose for them to reach the desired spot in our body. Synthetic biology provides a solution by using microorganisms or enzymes as little programmed machines that can act specifically within our body. But isn't it dangerous to give bacteria to someone who is already ill? Not in this case. Here the bacterium has been modified and is now on our side. Often it's not even a living organism but only a protein envelope in which we can fill in our active agent. In order for a little transporter to reach its goal, we add a receptor that can bind specifically to the region in our body we want the agent delivered to. This little machine is then taken in by the patient and eventually reaches the bloodstream. Here it will just swim around without further consequences unless it reaches its complementary region where it binds and sets the agent free. This agent can now react with our injury and soon we would be recovered. This is also done quite often with viruses which are really only a fancy protein envelope for genetic material. This genetic material is exchanged and a DNA that turns the malicious virus into an ally is introduced instead. Scientists make use of this to detect cancer, for example. This might be a very promising option for specifically killing tumor cells. And last but not least, there is synthetic biology in the energy sector. This field is also very important since we need energy practically everywhere in our lives and synthetic biology might offer an alternative source. A good example is the hydrogen production in cyanobacteria. These are microorganisms with chloroplasts that dissociate water into oxygen, protons and electrons with the help of sunlight. These bacteria also have certain enzymes that turn the protons and the electrons into hydrogen during their metabolism. This hydrogen can later be used as fuel for cars, for example. It sounds all really interesting. How did you learn about synthetic biology? 
I'm actually participating in iGEM, an international contest in the field of synthetic biology. Teams from universities from all over the world take part in this. The idea is to propagate synthetic biology and to create new functions in microorganisms based on standard parts. Standard parts? Yes. Those are genetic parts that are collected in the parts registry where everyone can obtain and create new ones. These can later be mixed and matched to build synthetic biology devices and systems. And what is your team doing? We are the team from the TU Munich and we are building a 3D printer with bacteria that produce pigment only when hit by two lasers of different colors. This way you can define the exact position of the pigment within the block of gel. What a good idea! If you want to learn more about iGEM, you can visit their homepage, iGEM.org. There, you can also read about the different projects in the team's wikis. And don't forget to visit ours from the TU Munich. I won't. Well, I got to get going, but I'm glad we met. Good luck with the contest! See you!